So this sort of represents the time where my brother nearly murdered a child. Welcome back everybody to my second video covering Cuphead and another new episode of my Dark Aspects series where I take a look at some of the more mature content in kid-friendly games. It's clear Cuphead is stylized after the look of 1930s cartoons, but the overall tone is inspired by the creepy adult atmosphere of these old animations specifically. And it shows as early as the opening act. This game is about losing to the devil and collecting runaway debtors' soul contracts after all. So keep your hands and feet inside this killer coaster and sit tight as I talk about all the creepiest aspects of Cuphead. To start things off, for a game featuring head in the title, it sure has a decapitation fascination. The first instance of a beheading appeared in 2015 with this E3 trailer with the devil threatening the pleading brothers while the shadows of their heads are sliced off. As for the main game, the lyric, The Devil Will Take Their Heads, finishes off the opening song, which is not a figure of speech. If you die on the second phase of his fight, the game over screen where the bosses taunt will host a loving picture of the devil holding their porcelain crowns. And during that fight, the devil's own head will occasionally come off and transform into a hideous spider creature. Rumor, Honeybottoms, and Calamaria are two other bosses that'll detach for transformations, but Baroness von Bonbon seems to be the most obsessed with the idea. For her introductory animation, she makes a slitting motion at her throat while the head comically flips up and down from her neck. During her final phase, she'll literally attack with it pulling off multiple heads on expert difficulty, to then grow new ones in their place. But moving from one part of the face to the next, let's talk about eyes. The Baroness's castle, named Whippet Cream Pup, rolls its eyes dementedly when releasing a new minion. I love how unsettling this looks, poor things jacked up on sugar. Blind Spectre is a ghost that shoots out a barrage of eyeballs from his hands, while KG Carnation may be the most nightmare-inducing of all, with a sudden lack of them in his death animation. He's shown to be wilting, head tilted up in agony with hollowed out sockets. Calamaria's fight is a mix of skull and spectral shock, as her head separates from the body when it turns to stone and crumbles away, all while snakes come out of her eye holes during her petrifying attack. Even Cuphead and Mugman's invincibility conveys this visually, with either brother's head enlarging with blacked out eyes and a menacing laugh. The most signature gleam though comes from Mr. King Dice himself, revealing a slasher smile inspired by the coachman from Disney's Pinocchio, when he attacks immediately and without much warning. Before that, he'll maliciously loom over the boys during his match, lunging forward and transitioning to each miniboss by swallowing the screen whole. If you happen to be unlucky enough to land on the start over square, or let out a cackle unheard anywhere else, and his overall presence throughout the game makes for arguably more intimidation than even his master. Though that's not to say this demon doesn't have leverage, the devil's fight is quite the trip too. For attacks, he'll briefly become other creatures commonly associated with Satan, like the goat and serpent. His eyes will also turn white in chanting unholy spells, all until he's beaten enough to jump out of his own skin, escaping through the floor while the flames of hell close in around you. And since you are in hell, we get a glimpse of what else lurks in its depths, with peering eyes falling through to the final stage. As crazy as it gets here, right before being defeated he starts sobbing uncontrollably, which is pathetic of course, but works to be pretty disturbing. He's the sole boss where Cuphead and Mugman will start the battle in terror too, probably because he's one of two, the other being Jimmy the Great, to actually threaten murder. Besides blowing smoke in the shape of an exiled Cuphead, he'll shoot his own skull at you, which looks gross in slow motion. That's probably the most visually disturbing thing on here, but others worth mentioning are Beppy the Clown and his horse's defeated pose, where their bodies become limp, and the demonic domino duo Pip and Dot, with gnarled teeth opening up between their body. 
Now, if that wasn't enough to keep you awake at night, let's get morbid and talk death. The game is filled with the undead. There's mausoleums, ghastly bosses, and deceased NPCs, like the passengers of the Phantom Express. The topic is foreboded from the get-go, with the craps table that Cuphead and Mugman bet on in the intro being shaped like a coffin. The titular characters both become spirits when defeated, too, with a beating pink heart able to be parried for revival and multiplayer. But it's right before becoming apparitions I want to point out, since it's easy to miss. For a death animation, their body withers away, as seen in the frame by frame here with a headless skeleton turning to dust. If you manage to uh, die in the die house, which is impossible in game without hacking because there's nothing to kill you here, the background music becomes slower in pitch like it normally would in any other level. But unlike those tracks, King Dice's theme has lyrics. So an already menacing song becomes sinister, with a much slower sounding voice. On the topic of haunting music, there's that of the bad ending, achieved by willingly handing over all your collected soul contracts, which sees the brothers as eternal pawns to the devil. In addition to the maniacal laughing, an alternate sad track now plays during the credits, and upon opening the game back up, the main theme is played in reverse. The developers then clearly have a somewhat warped sense of humor, and that's not the only example. As of the 1.2 update, or cup date, three existing bosses have new routes after performing secret actions. For example, refusing to attack Ollie Bald when he starts to ball will result in a ravaging radish taking his place in battle. Sally's stage plays fight, though, can be changed dramatically in comparison, so let me explain. Her battle is all based around her dedication as an actress, with each phase being a part of the performance. Normally, the story depicts her getting married, following by a home life with children, with just as much murderous intent as their mother, apparently, and a final act showcasing Sally in heaven. It becomes a fight against her goddess form, a giant cardboard cutout, with her return in the angel costume to receive a standing ovation with the rest of the cast. This story can veer in an opposite direction with the player's influence, if, in the first act, the player stands on and lowers these cherub props, supporting part of the ceiling. After becoming lopsided, it'll fall and crush the husband to death. Sally will mourn for his loss, and the second act will instead take setting at a nunnery, with ruler tossing sisters replacing the children she would have had. The husband joins her side once more in a godlike form, but upon defeat will not be present for the roll call. Perhaps indicating that you actually killed not just his character, but the actor in a stage accident. The implication there is crazy, as they're shown to be real lovers outside the play with the game's good ending screen. While on the topic, it's theorized that bosses not depicted in this still were also truly killed following their battle since the absent bosses include one that perished and became a gravestone in their fight, another implied to have been eaten by his comrades, and a giant robot that seriously fell apart in battle. Another example of some more adult humor in Sally's stage plays fight is the theater backdrop reading Asbestos Safety Curtain, which is an oxymoron. It's now public knowledge that asbestos is toxic to humans, though it was a common material in the 20th century, used in manufacturing these curtains for its extreme fire-resistant properties. One last very morbid idea that didn't make it into the game is this unused beatbox. As an attack, she first looks around worriedly before crying and throwing her own babies at you as a last resort. That's a lovely thought, but from one to another, Let's now ask ourselves a question I'm sure every fan's proposed at one point. What's that liquid in the main character's head supposed to be anyway? Though mugs and cups with handles like this are typically filled with hot drinks, the straws kind of contradict that point. There's enough evidence, in my opinion then, to suggest that it's milk. There's the obvious color, and the boys even spawn from it in the Nintendo Switch reveal. The 2015 E3 trailer I spoke about earlier does show Cuphead filling up with something labeled Triple X, suggesting it's moonshine or something alcoholic, 
but I think it could have been an early version of the potion, granting them their rapid finger gun ability. Creators Chad and Jared try and provide an answer by claiming it's their soul, followed by the statement that doesn't necessarily mean their souls are made of milk, which is further support for that being the liquid in question. I don't think we'll ever get an actual answer, so it's ultimately left to fan interpretation. Just keep in mind that whatever it is, Mugman drinks it. Anyway, the Marine Corps level is a reference to propaganda cartoons. Werner Wormann himself is based on a German or Prussian soldier. So while speaking of theories, as this is the 1930s, he could be a veteran of World War I. The British flag hanging in the background then could either be a trophy of war or suggest he's a traitor. And these ghost rat prisoners, if not projections from the cat since it's mechanical, might be the spirits of Wormann's captured enemies. And that leads into my last point today, Inkwell Hell's casino and the foes bound within its walls. It's a place of death, sin, and home to plenty of unnerving scenery. The Tipsy Troops level features tables and back occupied with all sorts of demons. Chip's Bettigan's Brawl is played on a poker table, used by larger-than-life skeletons. Pirouletta's stage shows hovering, disembodied hands overhead, and Hoppus Pocus grimly attacks with skulls of his own species. But worst, or best of all, there's Mangosteen, a billiards boss that melts and vomits himself upon death. And please look at this horrifying concept art. If you're to remember one thing from this video, let this image burn into your brain. And that wraps up everything I wanted to talk about. Was there something that scared you personally I didn't get to, or any aspect of Cuphead you want to bring to my attention? Let me know in the comments. I won't give any details yet, but the next episode of Dark Aspects is going to switch the format up a bit. I'll see you for the next one, and remember, you can stay up to date by reading my schedule on the channel banner, or by following me on social media. Thanks for watching.